Uh, welcome back. Sorry for that the extra long extended intro screen thing. Intro whatever message. Um, I'm trying to decide. I was just trying to decide what to do. Um, um, I was trying to decide what to do about screenshots because um, I got a screenshot program uh, that I'm using to make screenshots and. Uh, so I'm, I'm actually going to create the thumbnail for last video um, because I haven't really actually done anything yet. So let's go to um, let's go to the web page and we're going to do something here. Um, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and. Let's pull up Unity. Let's go ahead and. Dang it, this should not be. There we go. Actually, I want to put this up in here. And I'm actually going to go ahead and expand this out to our full size here. And then I'm going to stop this. I'm going to check my DLE. I'm going to say reset and restart. And um, that's going to be about uh, 10 minutes, so that's fine. Um, so now I will go, um, I will change the screenshot, or I will, it doesn't matter. Sorry, I'm not coherent today. So let's uh, pull this up, um, let's do a screenshot here and that's what this thing is it's called screen capture it's actually pretty cool and let's see let's go ahead and put this in here what's happening why is that stuck huh oh Oh, I wonder if it's is this still recording. Everything seems to have stopped. I, I I'm guessing it's still recording, but we'll have to see. So, let's see. Let's go ahead and click it. And I believe it's still got to be interesting. Uh, maybe you'll see. Maybe you'll see it like completely stop. And uh, save image, but hide. We'll do that. And because that's so slow, that's why it looks a little blurry. And okay, so so the next thing we want to do is we want to okay. Um, let's see. Let's see the following code. Okay. Uh, okay. Double click on the asset, click open uh, button in the inspector window. Uh, script editing is not done inside Unity. Instead, scripts are in another program called Visual Studio. When it's set up, you'll be able to edit a script, explore the default script. Um, let's break down the default script. Now that you can see in Visual Studio, the first three lines of code are let's pull this up, and but then let's actually pull the this over it. So, because I can see that there okay so let's break down the first three lines of code are uh, using system collections using system collection generic using unity engine and um, using has been a a kind of a staple for major um, most of the major programming languages um, they usually have something it's called uh, a library sometimes it's called a package sometimes it's C sharp it's using um, you have includes in C and C++. So basically they're just including um, uh, libraries or other pieces of code. Uh, these are called using directives. They allow you to use the use code implemented elsewhere in the, within the script file. For example, the word mono behavior in the next line would not be usable if you didn't have using Unity engine here. In most cases, the using directives are included by Unity by default are enough. So you don't need to worry about these. The next line is Public class player movement mono behavior. 
this is the start of a class declaration. Classes are like plans for, like the plans for instances, which are called objects. When a uh, class object is instantiated, for example, by attaching a script as a component to the game object, that instance is called an object. Objects are the building blocks of code, and they exist throughout the work you've already done. Classes you have already met include animator, ridge body, game object, and transform. These exist in your game already. Another way to think of classes is that they are factory buildings. The factory takes an input, does a few things in it, to it, and then produces an output afterward. We'll return to this factory analogy with other code elements. The next line is simply an open curly brace, or bracket. In this series of tutorials, they'd be called braces. Braces are an essential part of the C-sharp language as they define code blocks. Code blocks are lines of code which exist between an open and closed brace. Braces must always exist in pairs. Uh, for the class declaration, code block the closed brace at the bottom, but there are two more code blocks within the class declaration. These two code blocks contained in the class de declaration are indented. Indentation is not technically necessary, but it's very helpful in defining where code blocks begin and end. And then one thing, um, if you kind of, I don't know if you remember it, but um, in um, um, in uh, Godot, um, they use a, their scripting language is based on Python. In Python, you have to do indentations, and you don't have any, anything delineating when a start and an end, or even... Um, like a statement like this is a statement ends with a semicolon so it basically um, uh, executes code from start to finish now this here is a code block and um, you don't strictly need a semicolon on the end of the code block but it's like a statement but you can have a bunch of statements in there but uh, Python didn't have that so it's kind of annoying um, having to always indent um, um, a specific way um, or else it would you know get angry at you or whatever and I think this is more readable and stuff than than that way is anyways that's not really important what is important is um, let's see um, the next line is uh, forward slash forward slash start is called before the first frame update any text that is preceded by a double forward slash like this is, shown, is known as a comment. A comment is anything that you want to be completely ignored by the computer. In most cases, they work serve as a label to explain something about code around them. In this case, the comment gives a brief explanation of what is declared below it. After the comment is the start of the first method declaration. Okay, let's return to the factory analogy. If a class is a factory, then a method is a machine within that factory. Methods can take in data perform an operation, then give out or return data. All method declarations have the same format. Uh, first, they state the return type. This is the type of data that's going in to be given out when the method is finished. In this example, the return type is void. This is a special C-sharp word that means nothing. Um, the method literally ret returns literally nothing. After the return type comes the name of the method, in this case, start. Um, after the name, there's a pair of open and closed curved curly brackets, you can call them curly brackets because that's what, um, well actually no, um, we call, these are just parentheses really, I mean you can say parentheses because that's the way they are used in, in regular English text or regular, you know, text. This is a series of tutorials, they'd be called parentheses, of course that's what we call them anyways, it, these are, um, really, um, brackets, okay, um, braces are, are actually the square ones, but the rectangle ones. And then um, um, these are technically brackets, or we used to call them curly brackets because they're curly. And then, um, and of course, parentheses, you know what those are. Um, within these parentheses, methods have a chance to declare what type of data they want to take in. These pieces of data are called parameters. So there's nothing between the parentheses. There are no parameters declared. Uh, the three pieces of information, the return type, uh, name, and parameters, form a method signature. In most cases, a method can have whatever signature you like. However, modern behavior classes can use some special methods which need to have specific signatures. These special methods don't need to be called from your code. Instead, they're called at specific times by unity. Start is one example of a special method. It's called as soon as the game object it is on starts. 
which is usually as soon as the scene starts. This makes it ideal for doing things like setup that you don't want to repeat. Now, I don't, most of you that are watching this probably already know about programming in general. Um, but those that don't, that are kind of semi interested in it, um, um, they're calling these methods. Um, they started doing that when they started doing this whole, you know, object oriented programming, which basically states that um, uh, each, um, an object is essentially um, data and code that acts on that data. So you might have, um, you know, um, you might have your address, which had, or you might have your, like, a database which has your name, um, your name and your age, right? And maybe your address. And, um, <clears throat> um, so, so the, in, within the class, or within the object, um, your name and address, would, uh, name, age, and address would be in there. And then you'd have these uh, functions that would actually work on, so that's why they call them methods. Because they, they have a method that act on the stupid data, I don't know. Um, back in Pascal days, they had two things called procedures and functions. A procedure was essentially analogous to a, analogous to a subroutine um, and basic, which is basically a, a list of commands, right? Um, procedures never returned anything. They just uh, they just uh, committed actions, these statements in there. Uh, a function in Pascal was something that actually um, did something and returned a type. And then um, when you went to C and C++, um, they're all functions. Um, um, procedures are not. Um, they're functions. Uh, just some that don't return anything, so they have that void type, return type. Anyways, that's just a little stupid trivia that probably nobody cares about because those that know it, know it, and those that don't probably aren't interested. So it's just, I don't know, I thought I should talk about it because I keep seeing the method, 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 and um, method always still sounds dumb to me. Function sounds fine. Procedure sounds fine because uh, I grew up with Pascal. Um, but uh, a function uh, is is it, really what it is. It's a function. It's uh, It performs a function. It uh, executes some code, and it executes some code on some data. I don't know why method it has got to be called method. Anyways, um, that's not really important. What is important is that uh, I am at the end of this video, and I probably wasted some time, and I didn't mean to do that, so I apologize. So I will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.